Welcome back to Rupp Arena for game two of the Southeast Region semifinals. And this one should be a dandy. The Michigan Wolverines and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. We're trimming the field on the road to Seattle. Virginia won earlier tonight, eliminating the number one seed, Oklahoma. The Cavaliers will play the winner of this game Saturday for the championship in the Southeast. Michigan got here by beating Xavier in South Alabama. You see how the Tar Heels got here by beating Southern University and UCLA. Michigan with wins over Xavier of Ohio and South Alabama. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt along with Len Elmore, and this game should be physical. Both teams average over 90 points per game. The difference will be in the coaching. Dean Smith, the master, has been around so long. Steve Fisher took over for Michigan just before this tournament began when Frieder went to Arizona State. Well, Dean Smith with 15 straight NCAA appearances, 19 out of the last 23. He knows what to expect in this tournament. He knows what buttons to push, what strings to pull. When you look at Steve Fisher, though, he's the assistant coach of Michigan. They've been there before, but he's got to make the calls right now, and that's vastly different than being an assistant. The lineups for Michigan. Senior co-captain Glenn Rice, Lloyd Vault, Terry Mills at 6'10", Mike Griffin, a 6'7", junior, and Ramil Robinson, who had 29 against Carolina the last time they played. Bucknall, Madden, Scott Williams, Jeff Lebo, the floor leader, and King Rice, the 6'1 sophomore, start for North Carolina. J.R. Reed is back from his suspension. He is not starting for North Carolina. The referee is Don Rutledge. The umpires, Wally Tanner and Tom Scott, out of the SEC. So Dean Smith, the master, going against Steve Fisher, who is still unbeaten in his two games as head coach at Michigan when Bill Frieder moved on. And the Wolverines control the tap. North Carolina has had 23 different starting lineups in 36 games. Robinson kicks it out to Rice. This is for three. And right away, Glenn Rice, offensive leader of this team, gets his team off to a good start. Carolina's going to have to get a lot closer than that. Lebo answers with three. No butterflies here so far. Rice drives the right side, tries to bang it in and gets the roll. He has five points to start this game. Robinson will be called with his first personal. 18 seconds left in that ball game, and Seton Hall about to move on, leading 78-63. We told you we have already put one team into the final eight. And that is Virginia, an upset winner over Oklahoma. And it now appears, Len Elmore, that Seton Hall is ready to move on as well. Well, I know P.J. Carlissimo has got to be proud of his fellas, particularly when he goes up against someone who he was a camper in Bobby Knight's camp at one time. It is now a final. Seton Hall has moved on and becomes the second team of the eight that will play for the championship of the regions. How the West was won. Congratulations to P.J. Carlissimo. And to Terry Holland here in the Southeast. The Cavaliers upsetting the number one seeded Oklahoma Sooners. It's 5-3 Michigan. And Madden gets the roll to tie it with 18.57 remaining in the first half. Right now, Carolina had an opportunity to rush the ball up. That's what they want to do because they feel they're a little quicker and make better decisions on offense. Lebo. Carolina has its first lead of the night. Michigan content to come down and set up because they know they have Glenn Rice to fall back on if they can't get the ball inside to some of their big people. North Carolina, three for three already from the field. That's for three from Rice. I mean, I think he started shooting in the locker room because he came out here firing. He has eight points. And the Wolverines have a one-point lead. Okay, okay. Lebo for three. Both teams starting this game hot. North Carolina averages 90 points per game. Michigan averages 92. The Wolverines have been over 100 points nine times this year. Defensively, both teams don't seem to want to contest the outside shot. They're more content to pack it inside, although Carolina now puts some pressure on the perimeter people. Pass inside to Mills, it's good, and he's fouled.
The foul is on Lebo, his first. First team foul. Well, right now you wonder how Jeff Lebo gets caught on Terry Mills. North Carolina a lot of times winds up switching on picks that come from the top down inside or from the side in. And that time Jeff Lebo got caught on a switch and he wound up having to take a Terry Mills. And he really has no business underneath the basket. J.R. Reed makes his first appearance in the game as King Rice sits down. Terry Mills at the line. Followed by Falk. Well, 10 Michigan. Lost out of bounds. It'll be Carolina basketball. Both teams are perfect from the field. This is Madden at the top of the team. the foot of Rice, it'll be North Carolina basketball. Tim, we just had an opportunity to see J.R. Reed handle a ball outside, and really not being a ball handler, and against the as big, if not quicker, Michigan Wolverines, that's North Carolina's disadvantage to have him out there. Lebo's three points gives the Tar Heels a one-point lead. Lebo now, four for four, 11 points. And the foul is against Robinson. That'll be his second. Well, one of the wraps on the Michigan team, particularly against the guards, is that many times they try to bowl you over, use their strength rather than their quickness. And against South Alabama in the game before, Michigan actually had about three or four offensive charges in a row because their guards were content rather than give the ball up to run over people. And Ramil Robinson's going to take a seat and maybe take a look at what's going on. the first turnover for the Tar Heels. This is Callip who just checked in from a real Robinson. Foul on Mills. Foul is on Mills. His first, team third. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching the game in the West. Seton Hall's upset win over Indiana with Dick Stockton and Bill Rapley. Welcome to the Southeast Region Semifinal at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm Tim Grant along with Len Elmore. This is North Carolina with the basketball in white playing against Michigan. Both teams over average over 90 points a game. The number two and three seeds in the Southeast. So far, as you look at J.R. Reed, bang his way inside and get the ball to roll in. Lebo is four for four and has 11 points for North Carolina. Glenn Rice, the All-American for Michigan, is three for three and has eight points. North Carolina is perfect from the field, shooting six for six and lead by three. This is Rice. And the foul is on J.R. Reed. Now we want to show you the region here in the southeast because earlier tonight, the Cavaliers of Virginia became the first team to move on in the final eight. Virginia now awaits the winner of this game. 86-80 was the final, 11 ties, 15 lead changes. Virginia out-rebounded the taller Sooners, 38-26, to and controlled the tempo throughout. It was a freshman by the name of Brian Stith for Virginia who had a career-high 28 points, and the Cavaliers out of the Atlantic Coast Conference pulled the upset here in the Southeast region. And the last play, we had an opportunity to see J.R. Reed with an intentional foul. And we mentioned before that these two teams, virtually the same teams that played last year, and the emotion is running deep very early in this game. Lloyd Vault at the line. He's a 78% free throw shooter and hits the second one. So Reed sits down after throwing an elbow. And the intentional foul and the ball, the possession belongs to the Wolverines. And it's a smart move by Dean Smith to sit J.R. Reed down, let him cool off a bit, and recognize that he's dependent upon so much by his team. Let's go out there and play some basketball. 
Callup goes out of the game. Ramil Robinson comes back in for Michigan. We want to remind you once again that J.R. Reed, as you look at this ball thrown out of bounds by Michigan, it'll be Carolina ball. J.R. Reed was suspended in the last game against UCLA for a curfew violation. He came in three minutes late, the seniors voted, and sent him home. Talking with him yesterday, he was very open about the situation and about Dean Smith. He said he understands the penalty. He's anxious to get back. It's all forgotten, and the team has come together. Well, what happens in a situation like that with J.R. Reed is that his emotion is really peaking right now. His team almost lost against UCLA without him. He wants to come out here and make amends, and maybe he's gone a little bit overboard in that emotion. Dean Smith is furious about that call, thought it should have been Carolina basketball. We've got 15-30 remaining in the first half. North Carolina leads by one. Riceburg by three. Correction, two points. His foot was on the line. They only give him two. This is Williams inside, bought with a rebound. Carolina gets it back. Bucknall for three. Steve Bucknall, that's his shot. He's a leader on this team, or at least one behind the leader in three-point goals made. And if you leave him out there, six, seven, or not, he's got a nice little push shot from the outside. Look at that. Both teams red hot to start off. Shot clock has not been a factor. Carolina in blue. That's five turnovers for Michigan. That's for two from Rice. Tim, both teams have been hot, particularly from the perimeter, and it's hard to understand why both teams aren't pressuring the other out on the perimeter. They've been packing it in so much, it's hard to get it inside, but the guys are getting wide open shots, each team from the perimeter and three-point area. Bucknall with the turnover. Nice pass back to Bucknall. And they'll kick it back out and set up the offense. Fox to Rice. And he throws it away. Robinson will push it up. Nice pass to Mills. Basket by Mills. Two examples on King Rice's end of overpassing. Ramil Robinson on his end for Michigan makes a nice pass after drawing the defender to him. And that's what you have to do, make him commit. Williams is fouled from behind by Lloyd Balt. That's Balt's first. And the fourth team foul against Michigan already. We've got 13-24 remaining in the first half. Foul is on Balt. His first Mike Griffin forward. and Mark Hughes come back into the ball game for Michigan as you look at Steve Diamond Fisher. He took floor. over for Bill Frieder last week when Frieder announced he was going to Arizona State. 13-24 remaining in the first half. Arena, North Carolina leads Michigan by two. Let's talk about the revenge factor for a second, Len, because North Carolina has knocked Michigan out of this tournament the last two years. Well, particularly last year, both teams have lost only one significant player, Ranzino Smith for Carolina and uh, Gary Grant for Michigan. And you can't tell me that both teams don't recognize that they got big, strong, mobile people inside, and they're so worried about them that they haven't really contested the perimeter shot. Hence, you've got... Uh, Glenn Rice and Jeff Lebo, who are red hot from outside. Rice is seven for nine, or excuse me, four for five with 10 points. Michigan is seven for nine. Carolina is shooting 89%, and Lebo is four for four. He has 11 points. In that game last year, where North Carolina locked Michigan out of the final 16, Ramil Robinson at 29 for the Wolverines. This is Lebo for three. Time Griffin came out to contest it with a hand in his face, but Jeff Lebo for North Carolina still stood up to the line and buried it. Rice working on J.R. Reed. Dangerous pass. Inside the Hughes to Griffin, and they lose it out of bounds. That's turnover number seven for the Wolverines. We're recognizing that Carolina is going to double and triple inside. Hughes has got to be able to handle the ball without putting it on the floor. Look for some cutters. Lebo has had the hot hand. This is for three. And look at 
the smile on Lebo's face as he backpedals. He just shakes his head. And look at the smoke coming from his right hand. Rice answers it for three. Three points for Rice. What a show by Rice and Lebo. It's 26-21, North Carolina. 12-25 remaining in the first half. Lebo, and he's going to be called for throwing an elbow on Ramil Robinson. That's his first. Amazon Correction, Lebo, his second. Third. And a third team foul against the Tar Heels. Well, what happened here is that King Rice with the pick kind of gets Ramil Robinson out of the way. He still gets there in time because Lebo doesn't recognize that he's got a lane. He wants to pull up and take that jump shot. But Robinson got over in time and got in Lebo's way. And there was really nothing that he should have done except stand there. And that's what he did and drew the foul. It's Hughes, Rice, Mills, Callup, and Robinson on the floor right now for Michigan. Nice pass inside to Hughes, and he's fouled. That'll be on J.R. Reed, his second. Well, I think the outside shooters have finally gotten the attention of both defenses. They've now started to come out a bit, and what it's doing is creating some cutting room inside for some of the big people. That time, Hughes makes a nice cut. J.R. Reed's caught behind him. Who does that favor? It actually favors Michigan because they have the guys with the quicker feet and the more athletic players in there. Carolina players are wide bodies, but they can do the job. The only problem is they're more accustomed to getting straight feeds and the Michigan people seem to cut a lot better from inside. Mark Hughes, who will graduate with a degree in sociology this spring, hits both of them. He's on his way to law school, following in the footsteps of one Len Elmore. Our colleague and assistant district attorney, this is Reed. Callum to Robinson. Bucknall with the rebound. Carolina has the ball with a three-point lead. Nice job of getting back by Carolina and filling in the lane. Bucknall for two. Rice has it bang off the back of the rim. Numbers aren't there. Bucknell pulls up and he walks. Lloyd Vaught comes back in for North Carolina as you watch Buck Knoll walk back. And Callum will sit down. Number 21, King Rice. King Rice checks in for Lebo. And Lebo leaves with 17 points. And we still have 11.20 to go in the first half. Well, that's all Jeff Lebo right there, the 19 points to none, at least most of it is. And that's because he has been allowed to shoot from the perimeter from the three-point area without being contested. Taking shot won't go, followed by Hughes. Carolina loses it out of bounds. It'll be the Wolverines basketball. And the substitution with Lloyd Vort coming in gives uh, Michigan four big people, mobile big people, and one point guard. And that's really a good matchup for them because their people are mobile. Carolina guys, some of them are accustomed to being post people, and they really don't move as quickly. Higgins' shot is for two, and Michigan now trails by three. Nice pass inside to Chilkit. He kicks it back outside. Turnover, Carolina. This is Robinson. Two on one. Higgins. That's the quickness we were talking about. A turnover, and Michigan fills the lane with all their big people. Robinson now has five assists. This is J.R. Reed with the power move. Basket by Reed. Hughes. Carolina rebound. And Higgins loses it out of bounds. And the road to the final four continues tomorrow night as CBS Sports presents doubleheader action. Regional semifinal features the Cardinals of the University of Louisville against the Fighting Illini. The Gophers of Minnesota battle Duke. North Carolina State takes on Georgetown and the Tigers of Missouri against Syracuse. The road to the final four continues here on CBS tomorrow night. 
Seton Hall has already advanced. Virginia has advanced by beating Oklahoma. This is North Carolina in white with 9.52 to go in the first half. It's 30-27 Tar Heels. Williams with the turnaround. Robinson pushes it up. Jump stop and fires. It goes a long way in getting the Michigan guards offensive minded here. Shot by Madden. Pushes the lead back up to three for North Carolina with nine and a half to go in the first half. Williams with the rebound. This is Lebo who has 17 points already. Inside to Madden and Madden is fouled by Hughes who pushed him from behind. For Hughes, that is the first personal, and it is the fifth team foul against the Wolverines. Foul is on Hughes, his first team. So there's timeout on the floor with 9.06 remaining in the half, and Carolina leading 32-29. This action, Illinois battles Louisville, then Georgetown faces NC State tomorrow night on CBS Sports. This has been a good old-fashioned shootout. We still have 9.06 to go in the first half, and look at the field goal percentages. 76% for Carolina, 61% for Michigan. Three-pointers have been red hot. Lebo already has 17 points for North Carolina. Rice with 13. Now, normally, Michigan shoots well, 57%, but not even close to what they're doing. nine minutes to go in the first half. Mills for two. Basket. Carolina finally went to the trap because they feel that Michigan is suspect to pressure. But that time, Michigan handled it nicely by moving the ball around. Bucknell tries to bank it in. A rebound outlet to Robinson. He got caught in the air. And Mills makes a great save for Michigan. Fox blocks huge shot, and it'll be Michigan basketball. Now on that drive, you can see that the Michigan players still aren't accustomed to Ramil Robinson running the show, and Ramil Robinson's not accustomed to being a point guard. He's a fine guard, but he's got to make better decisions if he's going to distribute the ball. Robinson throws it away, and that's eight turnovers for Michigan, uncharacteristic of Ramil Robinson. Tar Heels in white, lead by one. The winner moves on to the title game in the Southeast region. This is Robinson on the turnover. Tough shot, way short, and J.R. Reed pulls the rebound. Lebo for three. He taps it over to Bucknell. Smart play by Lebo. For three. Glenn Rice has got to get over there and contest it, but what's happening right now is that both teams are kind of out of sync. The defenses have seen to scout at each team really well and really are forcing them to do things that they're not accustomed to doing. Both teams are unconscious when they get to shoot wide open shots from the perimeter. That's Robinson for three. Tim Grant and Len Elmore with you at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Michigan and North Carolina playing for the right to move on against Virginia Saturday in the championship of the Southeast region. Virginia upset number one seed Oklahoma by six earlier this evening. And we're saying that when you get a team and scouted them so well, they want to go inside, and that's usually the result when you find these high field goal percentages. And Michigan and North Carolina both can't get the ball inside, but they've got the open perimeter shots, and for the most part, they've been hitting them. Nice pass inside, and Fox converts. It's 37-34, Carolina. And you take a look, it's pretty warm in this gym right now. And on that particular play, it wasn't a fast break, but the Michigan big guys are kind of running with their mouths open. They look a bit winded now. What happens when you become winded? Shots begin to become shorter. That shot by Hughes was way short, almost an air ball. Jump hook by Reed. And 
and Steve Fisher realizes that his team is winded and wants the timeout. 6-16 remains in the first half. Four Tar Heels, and right now, Len Elmore, conditioning looks to be a factor. Well, just judging by the last time out by Steve Fisher, he recognized that his big people are winded. This type of pace for Carolina seems to be to their benefit. Their big guys seem fairly fresh because they've been shuttling people in and out. Also, when you run fast break situations, Carolina's got guards who can make certain decisions. King Rice is a born penetrator. He'll get the ball to the people that need it, where Michigan has a difficult time because maybe Ramil Robinson, as great a player as he is, is not a natural point guard. Inside the Hughes. If you're just joining us, Jeff Lebo has 17 points. He's six for seven from the field, five three-pointers, four assists, and two steals. This is Reeves. And Reed now has eight points, and North Carolina has its biggest lead of the game. Robinson, great move to the left side. Rice will bring it back up front to set the offense. JR scores, and he's fouled. Well, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, JR is getting the better of Terry Mills, but more importantly, Michigan now is failing to get over, as they did in the first few minutes, to help out. King Rice has a nice direct feed into JR. Normally, the help side would come. You saw Glenn Rice try to get there, but he was caught in between, and JR Reed is having a big day right now. The foul was on Terry Mills. That's his second. Reed is a 69% free throw shooter. And he misses it. Callum penetrates and kick it back out front to Griffin. Inside the Mills. Basket by Mills. Cuts the Tar Heel lead to five. is fouled by Rice. It almost looks as if J.R. now is so motivated coming back off the suspension that he's trying to take over. Well, the guards recognize when he's on, and he's demanding the ball out there. Whenever your horse demands the ball, you've got to give it to him, keep him happy. That's the seventh team foul against Michigan. He's now over the limit. J.R. Reed shooting one and one. And he misses that one. Four fifty remaining in the half. Out front to Griffin. Wolverines trail by five. And Griffin throws it away. Again, we mentioned that Michigan is suspect of pressure. Carolina is double teaming every cross of the ball. Every time the ball is handed off or a person goes behind a pick, Carolina will double team. Michigan doesn't seem to be ready for it. Madden goes out for North Carolina. So it's Fox, Lebo, Reed, Williams, and Bucknall now on the floor for the Tar Heels. J.R. Reed walks. Talk about JR being on, but is he trying to do too much right now? Well, right now, in a guy who really wants to prove himself to his teammates, yeah, it's possible he can be he can be doing too much. What happened in that instance, though, is that he really wanted to go to the middle and take a shot. Caleb came over real quickly and kind of threw him off his uh, balance. Dean Smith wants to talk to Reed and settle him down a little bit as Chilcutt comes back in to replace him. North Carolina lead. Rice has it batted away, and Mills gets it back. How can that be over and back when the ball was knocked back by Carolina? Well, that's what Steve Fisher is asking right now. Jeff Lebo slaps the ball backwards. The official may be saying that when the ball was caught, the pivot foot was established in the front court, and that he stepped back court. And that may be the call. Chilkin has his block down by a fault. And Chilka pushes him out and will be called for the foul. 
That's the fifth team foul against Carolina. His first and the fifth. Lloyd Vaught comes back in. Higgins will sit down for Michigan. This is Higgins. Yes, for three. Michigan just keeps coming at you with these six, seven, six, eight guys who can bust it from the perimeter. Rick Fox answers at the other end for the Tar Heels. Working on Lebo. Higgins on the baseline, tough angle. And Williams has the rebound. Nice pass in the lane to Williams, but he walked. Scott Williams doesn't agree with it. But Michigan has now got to get someone who is going to reset their offense and make sure that the people who can shoot the ball get it where they can use it. The last possession down there, Sean Higgins got the ball, as you say, behind the basket, and he just feels that he's got to put it up. A good point guard is going to call for the ball and reset the offense. Chilcutt and Fox get a breather for North Carolina. Reed and Madden come back in for the Tar Heels. Three minutes exactly to go in the first half. This is Mills. Basket by Mills. Cuts the lead to two. It's 47-43. JR now has 12 points. Rice for three. Three for Rice. Time Jeff Lebo got caught on a pick, and Glenn Rice, who uses picks very well, gets a wide open shot. Carolina hasn't switched in a while. They should go back to it to cover the perimeter. from 12 feet, can't get it to go, rebound, Michigan, here comes Robinson, nice pass to Mills, and by Jove, I think he's got it, excellent decision by Ramil Robinson, under two minutes to play in the first half, and Michigan has its first lead since it was 18 to 17 and the field goal percentages are still way above normal King Rice checks back in for the Tar Heels Lebo goes out Fox inside to Madden with a turnaround jumper rebound bought by Bucknell. Dean Smith wants his Tar Heels to settle down, go to the motion offense, because Michigan now is on a 10-2 run. Now going to this passing game that Carolina likes to run is designed to force Michigan to go out and play some defense rather than stand pat in the middle and wait for the shot to come off the, the rim. But that time Steve Bucknell ran out of the offense, so to speak, and really didn't accomplish what Dean Smith wanted. Offensive goaltending called on Carolina, 115 to go in the half. Michigan leads by one and has the ball. Callum for three. Rebound, Rice. Under a minute to play in the first half. This is Williams. Michigan can hold it for one shot. There's 42 on the game clock, 38 on the shot clock. And the Wolverines spread the floor. And you know they're holding it because Glenn Rice turned around wide open in the three area and didn't even look at the basket. 25 on the game clock. There's a three-second differential. Michigan with the turnover. 
Rice kicks it out to Bucknell, to Fox. Rebound, Michigan. Four seconds, Rice. That's the end of the first half with a score. Michigan 50, Carolina 47. CBS Sports covers of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Volkswagen. Experience German engineering the Volkswagen way. Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance, the quiet company. And by UPS for guaranteed overnight delivery from coast to coast. UPS runs the tightest ship in the U.S. CAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPD. Allstate for home, auto, and life insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by IBM, the people, products, and resources to help you find the right solution. Welcome back to Rupp Arena, and let's start by giving you this note. Michigan is 22-2 when leading at halftime this season. Take a look at some of the statistics. Both teams shot extremely well. 59% for Michigan, 61% for North Carolina. Three-point shooting has also been out of sight. North Carolina, 7 for 10, 6 and 11 for Michigan. The leading scores, you have to immediately go to Rice, who has 18 for Michigan and 17 for Jeff Lebo. Carolina went scoreless the last two and a half minutes of that half. Tar Heels lost a seven-point lead. Michigan ended the half on a 12-2 run. Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. More than 20,000 have come to, to watch. Virginia has already moved on by knocking off the number one seed, Oklahoma, tonight. Seton Hall is in in the West. And the winner of this game will move on to the championship of the Southeast region and play Virginia Saturday afternoon. Tim Brant and Len Elmore with you. And Lenny, looking back at that first half, Steve Fisher, the coach of Michigan, took a very smart timeout. Well, you know, sometimes when you're an assistant and you're coaching, you see those things because the head coach is always involved in strategy. But Steve Fisher is now somewhat of a blend, and he made a very good choice in calling timeout to give his guys a rest because they came back strong. Michigan was very tired and down by five points. They went on a 12-2 run after Fisher called that timeout to let his team breathe. And you saw the turnover to start the second half by Carolina. Tim, he was also helped by the absence of J.R. Reed, who Dean Smith wanted on the bench because he's got two fouls. But J.R. had been carrying Carolina for at least five or six minutes prior to that. Rice gets his own rebound and kicks it back out to Griffin. Michigan in blue as we start the second half. Lead it 50-47. Carolina right now is in a 1-3-1 zone. I'm sure they're trying to at least seal off the inside and force the shooters further out. Mills with a sweet turnaround. But that is the kind of shot that Carolina would rather see the Michigan big men take than the inside position they've been getting. Williams with a tough shot in the lane. Basket by Williams. It's a three-point Wolverine lead. We had three ties and nine lead changes in the first half. Madden makes the save and gets it to Lebo. It's a three-on-one Tar Heel break. And the foul will be on Griffin. Carolina got the ball up quickly. Again, the Michigan big men are having difficulty getting back on defense. Mike Griffin was the only one left back there, and he tried his best to slow down Steve Bucknall, but, you know, that's a freight train coming down. That's the first on Griffin. And the first team foul of the second half for the Wolverines. So Bucknall will go to the line. Steve Bucknall is a 6'6 senior, radio, TV, motion picture major. Played on the British Olympic team. He's from London, England, and he makes his first read. And he wants to go back to London to take his radio and TV expertise there, maybe be a sportscaster. Football is big there. Hughes replaces Lloyd Vaught in the Michigan lineup. Bucknall has another one coming. Well, you know, they talk about him being a great defensive player. And part of the reason is he has quick feet, maybe because he grew up playing soccer in England. Maybe. 52-51. Michigan. 
This is Rice working on Madden. He'll fire for two, and his shot is short. And Robinson kicked it out of bounds. And that time on the perimeter, Glenn Rice had a wide open jump shot, but as soon as he went up, Carolina closed in with two players because they're cognizant now of the perimeter. Inside to Reed, he'll kick it back to Madden. Lebo. Rebound, Michigan. Glenn Rice is 0 for 2 this half after being 7 for 10 in the first half. Fight for the rebound. Robinson has it and scores. And he's fouled by Madden. Now that's the value of Ramil Robinson. He's a big, strong young man. He followed up his shot nicely and went into a crowd. Ball gets slapped around, but here's Robinson. Now he takes it right to the basket, and Madden has nothing to do but slap. But the quickness of Ramil Robinson helped him out on that particular shot. Ramil Robinson is one of those great stories that John Thompson was trying to sell on the rules committee. He was a prop 48 player and is now holding a 2.9 grade point average. Well, there are a number of stories like that. Uh, Damone Patterson, or Damon Patterson of Oklahoma, is on Big 8 uh, All Academic, and he began as a uh, Proposition 48. It's a three-point Wolverine lead. Inside the Williams, who scores? Williams. Just a nice drop step by Scott Williams. He was isolated inside, just a one-on-one -on -one move. Shot is short. Hughes gets the rebound. They called the charge on Hughes. Fouls on Hughes. That's his second. Second team foul against Michigan. As we approach the 17 minute mark in the ball game, it's a one point Wolverine lead. Madden will go out of the ball game, and Rick Fox comes back in for the Tar Heels. So it's Williams, Lebo, Fox, Bucknall, and J.R. Reed on the floor for North Carolina. Got to remember that it's still warm in here in Carolina, shuttling their big people in and out, trying to stay fresh. Michigan hasn't substituted that much along their front line. Hughes with his second charge in a row. That's three fouls now on Hughes. And you know, Tim, it's interesting. The last game that Michigan played against South Alabama, they had a rash of offensive fouls, sometimes created by the same player. And you wonder if they want to come back on the other end and prove themselves. That was almost a carbon copy of Hughes' first charge a couple of possessions ago. Lloyd Balt replaces Hughes. Chilcutt replaces Matt. Arizona, the number one team in the nation, leading UNLV by three in the West. This is Reed with a power move. He now has 10 points for the Tar Heels. And the Carolina big men are now receiving the ball in deep. Scott Williams before a nice drop step to the basket. J.R. Reed three feet away. Michigan's giving up too much position. Chilcutt with a rebound. The outlet to Lebo. Here come the Tar Heels. Nice spin move and dish. And Reed can't convert. Should have been a power move straight to the basket. A little too much showboat by JR. Higgins. And Michigan regains the lead. 12 lead changes. Robinson is nailed by Chilkut. Strictly by accident, but the foul is against Chilkut. That's his second. That's something Michigan's going to have to do, continue to contest the entry passes inside because the Carolina big men are getting positioned too deep underneath the basket. And if the big men from Michigan aren't going to step in front of them, then the passers have to be pressured outside, and that's what Ramil Robinson did that time. Reed goes out, Madden comes back in. Anytime Chilkett and Robinson glide, Chilkett will get the best of it. He's 225 pounds, Robinson 190. Higgins. Michigan by one. Knocked out of bounds 
by Mills. It'll be North Carolina ball under its own basket. Again, a nice job of Terry Mills getting his hands up in the passing lane, preventing a direct entry pass into the big people for Carolina. Approaching the 15-minute mark to go in the ball game, and North Carolina leads Michigan by one, the number two and number three seeds in the Southeast region. The number one seed, Oklahoma, has already been eliminated this evening by Virginia. Vaught with a little jump hook. Can't get the roll. Rebound Carolina. Michigan just three for nine from the field this half. Fought with a rebound, and the foul will be against Vaught. It's kind of an interesting call because Vaught went up and got the rebound with both hands. You heard Madden scream. It was audible to everyone, but Vaught had both hands on the ball. That's the second on Vaught. Two teams into the final eight. Virginia has advanced by knocking out the number one seeded Oklahoma Sooners and will play the winner of this game between North Carolina and Michigan on Saturday. And in the West, Seton Hall has advanced to the final eight by knocking off the number two seed, Indiana Hoosiers. With 14.35 left in the ball game, Carolina leads Michigan by one. We've had three ties and 14 lead changes, five so far this half. Seems to be a little mix-up as to whose ball it was out of bounds, but the last foul was on Vaught. Michigan tried to pull a fast one and almost got away with it. We had a good look at Dean Smith. Ten ACC titles, seven times to the Final Four, and one national championship. This is Lebo of Carolina. J.R. Reed. Basket banged it against the back iron and got it to go. He's asking for a foul, too. Carolina lead is three. This is Rice, who ties it. Rice now has 21 points. Reed at the top of the key for Carolina. Tough shot by Fox, and it's a two-point Tar Heel lead. That one's for three. So we've got some interesting matchups. You've got Ramil Robinson at 6'3", playing uh, Steve Bucknall, 6'7". Robinson's able to take him outside. Bucknall's trying to find some space inside so that he can take advantage of his height advantage. Fox lost it out of bounds. It's Wolverine basketball. Michigan leads by one. An extended trapping zone by the Tar Heels. Give the shot to Vaughn. He doesn't want it. Instead, he goes to Caleb, and Caleb nails it for two. chance to post Robinson up, but they waved him out of there. Reed with the turnaround gets the foul, go to the line. The foul will be on Vaught, and that's his third. It's on Vaught, his third, team fifth. Substitution for North Carolina. That's five team fouls against one. Michigan. If you look at Loy Vaught, let me tell you about his first name, Loy. It comes from the initials of three names. His Uncle Louie, his Uncle Oliver, and his Aunt Yvonne, L-O-Y, Loy. He goes out of the ball game. And Mills comes back in. Reed goes to the line with 16 points, two rebounds. He's 0 for 2 at the line this evening. Michigan will always have a problem with the J.R. Reed if they become really complacent and allow him to get position inside and then expect to play defense there. 
the person who guards JR, and it may be Terry Mills, is going to have to start playing defense before the ball comes to his side. Keep JR from getting that spot on the low block because that's where he's most dangerous. Reed finally hits a free throw and cuts the lead to two. Hughes, nice pass. Down low to Rice, and he hits it. Great job of breaking the pressure of North Carolina, and that's what you do after you break the pressure. You attack it. 12 minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the ballgame. Tim Grant and Len Elmore with you at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, the Southeast region. Williams was wide open. Reed didn't see him until it was too late. It'll still be Carolina basketball. And that time, as we said, Terry Mills was guarding J.R. Reed until he switched off when Reed and Scott Williams crossed. And then it was Hughes. And Hughes did a nice job of keeping J.R. from going lower than the dotted line. Rice, Williams, Reed. Lebo and Madden on the floor for North Carolina. Nice pass to Madden. Passed by Madden. What a look by Lebo. Great peripheral vision. Robinson penetrates against Reed, follows his own shot. Gets it back for Michigan. That's that upper body strength of Ramil Robinson coming into play. Caleb shot, air ball, Hughes with a follow. That's been by Hughes. 4-point Wolverine lead. The foul will be on Mills, and I think JR may have gotten away with a walk. He certainly did. He took a little hop step, but the fact is, Terry Mills still allowed him to get down by the block, the little red rectangle, down low to the basket. And you see JR right there. He loves it down near the block. You let him get it down, and Mills tries to push him away, but that little move that he did when he extended his right leg, which is a drop step, he's been successful with that all after all evening. And you got to keep him up higher. Hughes did a nice job earlier of keeping him near the dotted line. That was the third on Mills. Rice goes out of the ball game now, so it's Hughes, Caleb, Robinson, Higgins, and Terry Mills from Michigan. For North Carolina, it's Chilcott, Reed, Bucknell, Rice, and Madden. And at this point, with a four-point lead with a little more than 11 minutes to go, you've got to rest Glenn Rice a little bit because he's going to be counted on heavily in a close game when he gets down the stretch. Watch Reed in the paint. Blocked away by Hughes. Reed with the follow. Numbers aren't there for Robinson. He'll pull it out. Approaching the 11-minute mark. Robinson for three. Great patience. An exploration by Michigan. They explored the Carolina defense and took what it gave them. Michigan with its biggest lead. Nice pass to Chilkett. Back to Reed. For the bucket. Fisher wanted a three-second call. I think he had an argument. Carolina trying to erase Michigan's biggest lead of the night. It's 71-66 Wolverines with 10-15 remaining in the ball game. Robinson for three. Rebound Bucknell. We've had four ties and 18 lead changes. Nine in the second half. Chilkin. Basket by Chilkin. That wasn't so much of a fast break as a modified break, but the Michigan people are having trouble getting back again. Chilcutt leaked out and beat everyone back. Higgins will fire for three and hit. And Tim, have you ever seen a team with guys 6'7", six, 6'8", six, such great perimeter shooters? Michigan is unbelievable from outside. Madden with the turnaround. His shot is short. Hughes with a big rebound, and the foul will be on Hughes for pushing off. That's four on Hughes. 
Now, I'd say that was a pretty tough call as well. With all the banging and pushing going on underneath, Hughes may have had possession of the ball before he made contact. You big guys are all the same. That was a good push off with the left arm by Hughes. Hey, but I had the ball. Get him off me. Get him off me. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Get him off me. I had the ball. Nine minutes and 30 seconds exactly remaining in the ball game. It's a 74-68 Michigan lead. J.R. Reed will be at the line shooting one and one. J.R. stands for Junior. His name is Herman, the same as his dad. His dad played for the Baltimore Colts in the NFL. He has struggled at the free throw line tonight. Reed is one for five at the line. This is Higgins for two, and Reed gets it back. Rice is fouled. Foul is on Vault. And that's his fourth. And as valuable as Lloyd Vaught is, as a coach, you just hate to see those types of fouls. You never want to foul a jump shooter in a situation like that. You know, King Rice is not a great perimeter shooter. You want to contest it, but you just don't want to foul because you're giving him uh, an opportunity on the line to get bailed out from Rice. taking a shot like that. He is an excellent free throw shooter, however. Buck uh, Rice is 82% from the line. And he hits this one. You know, he's a 44% field goal shooter, and you want to take your chances instead of giving him the sure two. Vaught goes out with four personals. It's Robinson, Griffin, Mills. And Higgins on the floor for Michigan. 74-70, Wolverines with 9.15 remaining. Timeout. Michigan leads by four, but the Wolverines have got to be careful now because Vault has four personal fouls, Hughes has four, and Mills has three. And you look at the other side, Carolina has none. And what the importance of, of that is, even though Michigan has a number of other people, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, they're perimeter jump shooters like Higgins and Rice. These are the three guys who take up the bulk of the work inside. Lebo is 0 for 2 and scoreless this half for Carolina after going 6 for 7 in the first half and scoring 17 points. And North Carolina has to get him back in the offense. That is the halftime score. UNLV leads top-seeded Arizona by one in the West. Seton Hall has already advanced in the West, and Virginia has already advanced in the Southeast region by beating Oklahoma. Mills inside for Michigan. It's a great feed by Glenn Rice, who saw all the way and just had to find a way to get the ball inside. Man-to-man -man defense by the Wolverines. This is Bucknall. Tough shot off balance. Hughes with the rebound. Correction, Mills. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching the game in the West between UNLV and Arizona. That one at halftime with the running Rebels leading top seeded Arizona by one. Here we're at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, the Southeast region, and J.R. Reed squares up with Glenn Rice, and they have words, and it brings the crowd to its feet. We've got eight minutes and six seconds remaining in the ballgame. Michigan leads Carolina 76-72. You see inside, after the bucket, a little pushing and shoving, Glenn Rice pushes J.R. Reed out of the way. And although Glenn Rice is known to be a slender forward, uh, not a physical type, it didn't seem to be any back down as both he and J.R. but it hits. North Carolina, the number two seed. Michigan, the third seed. We've had four ties, 18 lead changes. Michigan led at the half. And Michigan is 22 and 2 when leading at the half this season. North Carolina has knocked Michigan out of the NCAA tournament the last two years. That has been on the minds of the Wolverines. This is Caleb. 
He'll pull it up and wait for the rest of his teammates and set the offense. Michigan looking to get a good shot every time now, knowing the foul trouble that they're in. I'm surprised defensively they haven't gone to a zone, but they're willing to go with what they have and try to build the lead as quickly as they can. Nice follow by Griffin, can't get it to go. And the foul is against Mills. Both teams have shot extremely well throughout this game. 59% for the Tar Heels, but look at second chance points. The Wolverines hold the advantage there. Reed with 21 points. Rice with 23. Lebo has 17 points, but he has none the second half for the Tar Heels. Madden takes it in the paint, has it blocked down by Mills. This is Lebo for three. Boy, has he gone cold. Well, what's happening now is that Michigan, with the foul trouble that they have, they're not backing away. Vaught and Mills are still playing consistent defense inside, and Lebo's going to have to take that shot. Carolina with the save. It's a three-on-one. Reed. He's fouled by Vaught, and that's five. Vaught will leave the game. And just as we mentioned that they haven't backed down, Vaught comes down with maybe not so great a decision to contest JR with what seemed to be a layup. On the interior defense, it's one thing, but coming in on a play, it's another, and Vaught was caught that time, and he's gone. That's the third time this season that Lloyd Vaught has left with five personal fouls. He sits down with four points and six rebounds. His replacement is Mark Hughes, a 6'8 senior, and Hughes has four personals. This is what we're talking about now. Vaught has already left. Hughes with four and Mills with three. Carolina still has none. And J.R. Reed is at the line. He's a 69% free throw shooter, but he's one for five at the line this evening. Make it one for six. And Tim, as Mark Hughes entered the game, he being a senior co-captain here, called the team together in somewhat of a huddle. And I'm sure he's telling, come on, we got 636. We've got to give it what we have. And don't lay off. And don't lay back. Reed hits his 22nd point. Reed, a reminder, coming off a one-game suspension for curfew violation. And he'll sit down. So it's Williams, Fox, Lebo, Bucknall, and Madden on the floor for Carolina. And Williams is called for the block. That's the third team foul for North Carolina. Foul is on Williams. It's actually a pretty good foul because Michigan was on their way to a two-on-one fast break. 6.35 remaining. Michigan leads by three. The save by Fox. He'll pull up and take it himself. are on their feet as we approach the six-minute mark. Half-court trap of Carolina giving Michigan problems. Rice for three. That time Glenn Rice ran away from being a receiver, kind of hid down low and popped out just at the right time. Nice pass inside to Williams. Misses the layup and gets his own foul. That may be a sign of the problem Michigan has. None of their big people went after that ball aggressively, and that's because they're in foul trouble. Robinson on the baseline, double clutch, and banks it in. Bucknell inside, he's fouled, Bucket won't drop. Reed is about to come back in for North Carolina. And that defensive play, there may have been a bit of a problem for Ramil Robinson. He again gambled, and when you gamble outside, you put pressure on the back line. He can't afford to do that because his players, his teammates, have foul trouble inside. That's the third on Robinson. Williams sits down as J.R. Reed comes back in, and Bucknall goes to the line. Eight points, eight assists for Bucknall.
The senior hits the first one. And he cuts the lead to two. Coming out of the lineup will be number 55, Mark Hughes. Bucknell, Lebo, Madden, Fox, and Reed on the floor now for Carolina. Hughes goes out of the ball game for Michigan. It's Caleb Higgins, Robinson, and Rice on the floor for Michigan. Michigan by four. Caleb is called for the personal foul. Lebo will go to the line. That's the first on Caleb. Look for North Carolina now with the lineup Michigan has to start going inside to their big people, their post-up people, because Michigan really has only perimeter people except for Terry Mills in the game. Now you look at Sean Higgins, he may be 6'9", but he likes to shoot outside, and he doesn't like to play defense inside. Lebo is an 86% free throw shooter. He's the best in the Atlantic Coast Conference. He made 43 of his last 46 free throws, including 41 in a row. He's got 17 points and seven assists this evening, all in the first half. To lead to three. Be smart. Be smart. So Lebo gets his first two points of the second half, and Carolina pulls within two. This final is in. Carolina with four, with 4.55 remaining in the ball game, and Michigan leading by two. Carolina has three fouls to give, and the possession arrow belongs to Michigan. It's 83-81. Tim Brandt and Len Elmore with you at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. The semifinal of the Southeast region. Earlier tonight, Virginia moved on by upsetting the top seed, Oklahoma, 86-80. They await the winner of this one. Len Rice. Kicks it back out to Mills, and Michigan will set the offense. Shot clock at 25. Williams gets it for North Carolina. Well, smart pass by Mills. He threw it right into a crowd. That's some kind that he should turn and look at the basket rather than give it up. He never made himself a threat. Inside the J.R. Reed. Turn around. Yes! We're tied. J.R. knows that Mills can't really contest him with the foul trouble. Under four minutes to play. Boy, they gave Higgins a lot of room. This is Rice for three. Great shot of Steve Fisher. 2-0 as the head coach at Michigan. Fisher's idol was Dean Smith. As a high school coach, he remembers sneaking into a clinic to get Smith's autograph. Bucknell for three. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching the game in the West between UNLV and Arizona with Dick Stockton and Bill Raftery. Tim Brandt and Len Elmore at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. There's 319 remaining in the Southeast Region semifinal game. Michigan leads North Carolina 86 to 83. Michigan in dark blue. Carolina with the ball, bringing it in under their own basket, dressed in Tar Heel white and blue. This is Bucknell. Substitution of Hughes inside gives Michigan another post defender. Strong power move by Madden. Can't get it to go. And Madden loses it out of bounds. And that move by Steve Fisher by putting Hughes in paid some dividends. Higgins not being a post defender. Hughes comes in and does a nice job. 
Lebo has 19 points for Carolina, but only two this half. That's been a factor. Five ties, 15 lead changes in the ball game. We're now under three minutes. Williams for Carolina. Madden took a shot to the chin. Shakes it off and now appears to be all right. Or is he? He wants a timeout. Two minutes and 39 seconds remain. It's Michigan by three. North Carolina has the ball. North Carolina has three fouls to give. And Michigan owns the possession arrow. What does North Carolina have to do, Leno, more to get back in this thing? Well, right now, they've got to recognize that Michigan is in deep foul trouble inside with their post people. J.R. Reed's been hot. You go to him, and if Michigan wants to peel back, you take the perimeter shot. It's really all you can do. I say to get back in this thing, obviously they're in it. But to win it, this is Lebo. Inside to Williams. Basket really Williams. nothing Hughes can do on that. He gave up the position. Williams steps in. One more foul, and Hughes is gone. Both teams shooting 55% for the game. Look for Michigan now to really try to find Glenn Rice. He's the man that's got him this far. He's going to carry them the rest of the way, I guarantee you. Caleb working against Lebo. To Rice inside the Hughes, and Hughes is fouled. The foul will be on Fox. That's his first. That's only the fourth team foul against the Tar Heels. And Tim, this is not to make myself look good, but it's to make a point. Glenn Rice, as potent an offensive player as he is, recognizes his value as a decoy as well. He got the ball outside three-point range, drew a lot of attention, and still slid it down to Hughes in an area where he could use it. And when I say carry them, it's not only offensively. He's a senior, he's a leader, he's been here before. Hughes now has five points. He's three for three from the line. Under two minutes to play. Michigan leads by two. Carolina with the ball. Bucknell inside to Williams with the turnaround. Rebound to Rice. And J.R. Reed with the foul. That's his third. UNLV leads Arizona by two, 17-19 remaining in that ball game. And as soon as this game ends, we will take you back out to the West with Dick Stockton and Bill Raftery for the finish of that game. Michigan. Michigan takes a timeout with 144 remaining and a three-point lead. Leads by two points, 87-85. Michigan has two timeouts left. Carolina three. Fouls to give. North Carolina has one. And the possession arrow belongs to Michigan. Michigan has gotten the lead via three-point field goals. They're 12 of 23 for the game. Rice, seven for 11. Meanwhile, Lebo is 0 for 3 from the field for the Tar Heels, although he's 2 for 2 from the line this half. Caleb for the Wolverines. 140 left to play. And the foul is going to be on Lebo. And the indication from the official was a hold, which kind of determines that Lebo may have tried to pull him down. Watch his hands right there. There it is right there. He reaches for the ball and gets caught right in front of the official. Good call. That's the third on Lebo with 136 left to play. 87-85 Michigan. The winner moves on to play Virginia, which upset Oklahoma earlier this evening. I'll tell you, Tim, I don't know about Steve Fisher, but I even get nervous watching some of the Michigan players handle it out front. They seem to be very tentative in dribbling the ball. 23 on the shot clock. Higgins. The guys to watch are Robinson and Rice. Rice for three. Under a minute to play. A five-point Wolverine lead. J.R. Reed, pump fake and scores. And North Carolina takes one of its timeouts. 
So with 50 seconds left, it's Michigan 90, North Carolina 87. Michigan, 50 seconds remain. Both teams are over the limit. Possession arrow belongs to Michigan. Rupp Arena, more than 20,000 enjoying this one. It's Fox, Lebo, Madden, Reed, and Rice on the floor for Carolina. This is Robinson, and he's fouled almost immediately by Bucknell. Tim, in this situation, Carolina, I thought, would at least give their defense a chance. They've got one foul to give, I believe, and that was it. But you think that they would give their defense a little bit of a chance here to see what's going on before they decide to foul. Ramil Robinson wasn't making any uh, headway towards the basket, so you give him a chance. I guess they don't. That was it. Robinson is 0 for 1 at the line tonight. He's a 65% free throw shooter. Doesn't get this one. Reed with the rebound for Carolina. 45 seconds left. From those of you who have been watching the game in the West, here at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, 27 seconds remain in the ball game. Michigan leads North Carolina 90 to 87. The foul was called on Rick Fox of North Carolina. That's his second. And Higgins will be going to the line for Michigan. The story in this game has been Glenn Rice. Higgins will be the Big Ten Player of the Year for Michigan has 34 points. Tim Branton, Len Elmore with you. Carolina right now is in a sticky predicament. You got Sean Higgins on the line. He shoots 76% from the free throw line. And Carolina, if they get down by five, they're going to have to rush the ball up court, look for an easy two, or try to set up a three-point play and then get immediately into their full court pressure and foul. Higgins shooting one and one, and he makes the first one. Sean Higgins is a story unto himself. He's the son of a former ABA player by the name of Earl Higgins, who stayed around for a couple years. And Sean recently played a little one-on-one -on -one with his dad. He beat his dad, and his father realized that he's ready. And he hits the second one. What a story for Steve Fisher, who took over for Bill Frieder just before this tournament began. He turns 44 years old tomorrow. It's his birthday. This is Madden for three. 17 seconds remain. Back outside to Lebo. Carolina can't get a shot off. This is Madden for three. Mills with a rebound. That'll do it. Three seconds remain. It's over. Mills trying to add an exclamation point. 